Any announcements? Yes. So it is with Thanksgiving we joined as some of the church family to take down the decorations and actually some assistance with tools outside to bring the, those items in as well. I also want to remind each of you we have begun a new year and so it is an opportunity to join one of the Bible studies. There are many opportunities. I did notice in the bulletin this morning that um, the Wednesday um, evening group is actually, we're not in parables any longer. Um, we have actually moved on to Exodus and number study and it is proving to be um, a wonderful time together. So um, if you would like to join any of those, just get a hold of the um, church um, office. So if there is nothing more, let's join our hearts together um, in worship. We begin with these wonderful words of assurance from Psalm 124. Our help is in the name of the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. And then from Jude chapter 1, we receive God's greeting for us today. To those who are called, who are beloved in God the Father and kept safe for G Jesus Christ, may mercy, peace, and love be yours in abundance. <clears throat> Let's pray. Everlasting God, the radiance of faithful souls who brought the nations to your light and kings to the brightness of your rising, fill the world with your glory and show yourself to all the nations through, whom him, through him who is the true light and the bright morning star. Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. I invite you to join me in our responsive call to worship, which is found in your bulletin or on the screen, and it is from Psalm 36. Your steadfast love, O Lord, extends to the heavens, your faithfulness to the clouds. Your righteous... How precious is your steadfast love, O God! All people may take refuge in the shadow of your wings. They feast on the abundance of your house, and you give them drink from the river of your delights. For with you is the fountain of life. In your light we see light. O continue your steadfast love in those who knew you, and your salvation to the upright of heart. Our opening hymn of praise is, You See Servants of God, Your Master Proclaim. It is going to be up, the words will be up on the screen, um, but it also is in your bulletin, and it is also on page 103 of your hymn book. And please rise.
You may be seated. Our call of confession and prayer and assurance of pardon are responsive this morning, and they are in your bulletin and on, they will be on the screen shortly. It, it is in our confession where we realize our desire for God and our hope for God's mercy. It is in admitting the truth of our lives that we take the first step toward wholeness and healing. So let us confess our sin and shortcomings before God Almighty. Almighty God, you have revealed your love by the light of your Christ and taught your faithful people by the light of your Spirit. Enlighten our hearts and minds that we may give up our attachment to the darkness of sin and evil. Forgive us, faithful God, for outward obedience and inner resistance. Let your light brighten our way, your peace ease our anxious moments, your love heal our troubled minds, your joy kindle our memory and hope. Hear our prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. John writes in his gospel these words, for God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, that whosoever believes in him should not perish, but have eternal life. For God did not send his Son into the world to condemn the world, but in order that the world might be saved through him. Friends, although we never earned it and don't deserve it, God has poured out grace upon grace freely and in great abundance. In Christ we are forgiven, signed with the Spirit, lavished with gift upon gift, released into hope to live a life everlasting. Hallelujah. Amen. So there aren't any children with us this morning, but I am going to read you, I was going to give them a little bit of a message because I was going to give them the story that we did last week um, about Daniel. So you're going to have to bear with the children's message this morning. God warned his people over and over. If they did not obey him, then he would not protect them from their enemies. One of the enemies was King Nebuchadnezzar, ruler of the powerful country of Babylon. King Nebuchadnezzar wanted to destroy this special city of Jerusalem and destroy the beautiful temple of God. Because the kings and many of the people did not obey God, he let King Nebuchadnezzar win. King Nebuchadnezzar came to Jerusalem three times. The first time he took many people as prisoners, including many young people. The second time, he captured the king and the army and took 10,000 people as prisoners. Finally, on the third capture, King Nebuchadnezzar broke down the temple and destroyed the city of Jerusalem. He took away almost all of the rest of the people. They all had to move to the city of Babylon. Now, God's people could not live in their own country. Bad things had happened because most of the people had chosen not to obey God. Not all the people were bad, though. There were four, four good young Jewish boys who were taken as prisoners during the first capture. Their names were Daniel, Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah. They were good boys who loved God. They obeyed God's laws, they worshiped God, and they prayed. They were also careful to obey all God's rules about which foods they could eat and which foods they could not eat. Now, they were prisoners. They had to leave their parents and go live far away in the city of Babylon. 
While these boys were living in Babylon, King Nebuchadnezzar decided to choose all the smartest and the healthiest young prisoners to be his special helpers. Daniel and his three sons, or three friends, were chosen. The king wanted the prisoners to learn the Babylonian ways and to help the king. They were taken to the palace and were taught all the laws of Babylon. Their names were changed to Babylonian names. Belteshazzar, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. They learned science and math and all about the stars. While the boys were learning, the king put an official in charge of them. He told the official to give the young men the best food in Babylon. There was only one very big problem. Daniel and his friends knew that the king's food was food that God did not allow. The food had probably been used in the worship of idols. If they ate the food, then they would be disobeying God's law. Daniel told the king's officials that they would not eat the king's food. The officials liked Daniel and his friends, and he noticed they were good boys and always tried their, to do their best. He did not want to make them eat the king's food, but he was also afraid that the king would get mad at him. Then Daniel had a good idea. He told the official to perform a test. Daniel and his friends would only eat vegetables and drink water for 10 days. At the end of 10 days, the official would judge to see if they were as healthy as the other young men at the palace. So Daniel and the other three boys ate only healthy vegetables and drank only water for 10 days. At the end of the 10 days, the official noticed that these four boys were healthier than all of the rest of the young men at the palace. So from then on, they, he allowed them to eat the food that God allowed. They did not have to eat the king's food. At the end of the study, which was about three years, all of the young men were brought before the king so he could test them with questions. The king decided that Daniel and his friends were the best of all the young men in the palace. They were wise and intelligent. They were ten times better than all the magicians and wise men in the entire kingdom. Daniel, Shadrach, and Meshach, and Abednego became wise men of the king's court. They always loved God and obeyed his laws, even though they were a long way from home and their families. Even though they were prisoners, God blessed them and took care of them. Like Daniel and his friends, we should do the right things even if everyone around us is doing wrong. I invite you to pray together for our children and their safety. And the prayer is up on the screen or in your bulletin. Lord Jesus, may the hearts of our children be filled with your holy presence making your goodness their goodness in the eyes of God. May they be your light in this world, testifying without fear or shame to your truth and attracting many to the good news of your gifts of salvation and eternal life. Amen. So before we come before God's word again, let's pray for the Spirit stirring in our hearts and minds so that we might come to know God's will for our lives more clearly. Lord, as you shine the light of your word on us, we pray that your glory will rise upon us by the power of your Spirit. Darkness may cover the earth and thick darkness may cover the peoples, but we pray that your light would rise upon us, that your glory may appear to the world. Nations will come to the light of your coming, your word, and peoples will be drawn to the brightness of your coming. Help us, Lord, to lift our eyes to you, to hear you speak, and to listen with open hearts to your gospel. 
Empower us to respond to your word with obedience and help us to be your shining light in the universe. We pray this in your precious name. Christ, the light of the world. Amen. So from the title of the sermon, you might think we would be starting off with Daniel, but I thought that reading the children's um, Daniel uh, would be sufficient for our needs this morning. Um, but our first passage this morning is from Isaiah 62, starting at verse 1. For Zion's sake, I will not keep silent. For Jerusalem's sake, I will not remain quiet. Till her vindication shines out like the dawn, her salvation like a blazing torch. The nations will see your vindication and all the kings your glory. You will be called by a new name that the mouth of the Lord will bestow. You will be a crown of splendor in the Lord's hand, a royal diadem in the hand of your God. No longer will they call you deserted or name your land desolate. You will be called Hephalah, your land Beulah, for the Lord will take delight in you and your land will be mar married. As a young man married a young woman, so will your builder marry you as a bridegroom rejoices over his bride. So will your God rejoice over you. Our second reading is from a very familiar passage from the second, the first letter to the Corinthians chapter 12, starting at verse 1. Now about the gifts of the Spirit, brothers and sisters, I do not want you to be uninformed. You know that when you were pagan, somehow or other, you were influenced and led astray to mute idols. Therefore, I want you to know that no one who is speaking by the Spirit of God says, God, Jesus, be cursed. And no one can say, Jesus is Lord, except by the Holy Spirit. There are different kinds of gifts, but the same Spirit distributes them. There are different kinds of service, but the same Lord. There are different kinds of workings, but in all of them and in everyone, it is the same God at work. Now to each one of the manifestations of the Spirit is given for a common good. To one there is given the Spirit a message of wisdom, to another a message of knowledge by means of the same Spirit, to another faith by the same Spirit, to another gift of healing by that Spirit, to another miraculous powers, to another prophecy, to another distinguishing between spirits, to another speaking in different kinds of tongues, and to still another the interpretation of tongues. All these works, all these are the, work, are the work of one and the same Spirit, and he distributes them to each one just as he determines. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. So I do hope you were listening to the children's message this morning, as it was a good recap of Daniel chapter 1 that we heard Pastor Rudy unpack for us in his sermon last Sunday. As I listened last week, I could not help but think of a song I learned in Sunday school when I was a child titled, Dare to Be a Daniel. Maybe you sang it as well. And the chorus went, Dare to be a Daniel, Dare to stand alone, Dare to have a purpose firm and dare to make it known. As often happens, the Sunday message resonates in my mind during the week, and I could not help but think of the stories of Daniel and his friends that I would read and reread from our family Bible storybook when I was young. The interpretations of dreams, the amazing salvation from the fiery furnace, and of course Daniel surviving the lion's den, just to name a few. And they reminded me of how these faithful men were throughout their lives, how faithful these men were throughout their lives as they stayed true to God and did not falter in keeping the faith. Daniel is thought to have lived well into his 80s and possibly even his 90s. 
So it ended up being a lifetime of such great adversity as an alien. Daniel, has Hananiah, and Mishael, and Azariah were part of the cream of the crop of young men that were taken from their homeland in Judah to Babylon, and they were in their late teens or possibly their early 20s. It would appear that King Nebuchadnezzar was trying a different kind of conquest for taking over a nation. Instead of the usual enslavement of the captives, he was taking them into Babylon, not as slaves, but rather his plan was to ease them in to Babylonian society, thereby obliterating, obliterating, their, obliterating their religion and cultural identity totally, which in turn would reduce their resistance to his rule. Now these men were chosen for their nobility, their wisdom and their skill and their good looks to be groomed to work in his, the king's courts. In Babylon, these men had to adjust to a new home far away from their family. They had to learn the Chaldean language and be educated in the latest science and math, as well as learn the native religion of their new kingdom. On top of all this, they had to be called by new names, which was further attempting to eliminate any part of their identity that might be able to hold, they might be able to hold on to as a remnant of their roots and where they came from and to whom they belonged. For the king and the people in his court, they all thought they had removed all that would connect these young men to their God. However, they were not aware of a very important piece, because much like Je Joseph many generations before them, even in their exile, they were a part of God's plan to preserve his chosen people. Remember how Joseph conveys to his brothers as they bear the, all the guilt for selling them into slavery, oh, you meant it for evil, all right, but God meant it for good. It is a story that replays many times for the Israelites down through history when they would disobey the commands of God and God would send a plan of correction that would often involve another nation taking them over. While he would discipline them, they remained his chosen people. And he still loved them and would always retain a remnant of people that would carry on faithfully until the broken and scattered people would finally return in tradition to God. And he would restore them once again. In the first chapter of Daniel, there are three times the words the Lord gave or God gave is used. We, we read one of them last week, but the other two instances came later in chapter 1. I want to just review them with you. The first came in the chapter 2, as I said, and we read that God gave Jehoiakim, the king of Judah, into King Nebuchadnezzar's hands. The second is in verse 9, God gave Daniel favor and compassion in the sight of the chief of the eunuchs. And then the last is in chapter 17, God gave them learning and skill and all literature and wisdom. What we need to be keenly aware of here is that while Daniel and his friends are to be commended for their faithfulness to their God, through it all, it is ultimately God's faithfulness to them through, all, through it all and to his people. That it is the work down through the pages of redemptive history 
God remains sovereign and all-powerful, and he is in control, and the nations of the world, in spite of the present conditions, our gaze must remain on his kingship. This is important for us as we consider in our current situation with our pandemic. The virus has not caught God by surprise. And ultimately, it is being used by him to refine us for his kingdom's benefit. And we need to be like Daniel and his friends and remain faithful to our God and be ready to take a stand for what we believe. As a parent, consider what your children might do if they were suddenly whisked away from you to a place where everything they knew was different. Would they have the resolve of Daniel and his friends to resist things that were wrong? Or would they cave in to the ways of those around them? Well, the church, Sunday school, youth group, and the like are helpful. So much of a children's moral and religious values are passed on by the example of their parents, grandparents, aunts, and uncles. So it should make us even more vigilant in the witnessing and demonstrating God's faithfulness to them by not only our words, but by our actions. As the world we live in becomes more and more secular, even sending them to school can affect their ability to stand firm when facing decisions. And we need to be on guard for them to be able to counter what they may learn that is not in line with God's word. Taking this to the next obvious step, where would this take us? One day, we are here in the comfort and safety of our homes, and the next we are taken away to a new place. And we are expected to take on a whole different identity, a whole new way of life. Would we take a defeated attitude and conform to what this new place demanded? Or would we take a stand for our convictions and do <clears throat> do what God would want us to do, even if it was a decision that might have dire consequences? Would we, in sp spite of our circumstances, continue to do our best? Or would we make allowances for ourselves since we had such adversity, such adversity in our lives? Daniel and the other captives were taken to Babylon, and if you recall Psalm 137 in its opening verses, it tells of the sadness of the people that were relocated by the rivers of Babylon. We sat and wept when we remembered Zion. There on the poplars we hung our harps, for there our captives asked us for songs our tormentors demanded songs of joy. All the while, these poor souls were lamenting their captivity by the rivers. They were in, about in the land of their captivity. They were missing what we miss so often as well. God is present in the midst of our life messes. No matter what our situation, we should be able to sing with joy, even through the tears of loss. For our God remains faithful and continues to work out his sovereign plan around us and in us and through us, even at times in spite of how we respond to him. In the same way that Daniel went into Babylon as an alien, Jesus too left the realm of glory to come into the alien environment of our world. He was born in a lowly stable, died a horrific death on the cross so that we might gain forgiveness for our sins. And he rose from the dead that through faith in him we might live with him forever. One other key point for both Daniel and Jesus 
that made them alike is that they did what their Heavenly Father wanted them to do. We see as in later in life, as Daniel is older, we see as a result of Daniel's obedience, he was given great authority within Babylon. And Jesus, of course, is, has been exalted to his place at the right hand of the Father, where every knee will, will, every knee will one day bow before him in recognition of who he is. While well, Psalm 137 laments and doesn't seem to have any hope, our passage from Isaiah explains quite a different message. Instead of desolation, there is delight. And there is reinsurance and encouragement to continue to be vigilant in prayer and to call out to God in thanksgiving and intercession because of God's unfailing faithfulness. Friends, this is where we need to be. As verse 10 tells us, we need to continue to love those around us. This echoes the great commandment that tells us how we should live. To love the Lord your God with all your heart, and with all your soul, and with all your mind. And that we should love our neighbors as ourselves. Think how this would play out in light of tomorrow's Martin Luther King Day commemoration. If we truly loved one another in the way God intended, there would not be any racial discrimination. Daniel and his friends, right from the beginning, resolved to follow their God in spite of what have, could have been dire consequences. What I want us to notice here briefly is that he did not resist the king's command by staging an uprising or disrespectful confrontation. No, Daniel asked for leniency and suggested a trial period of eating different food, which in the end was not found not only to improve their overall well-being, but keep the kept them in obedience to their God. This is a, friends, this is another gem I wanted us to gain from Daniel. Taking a stand and being a witness does not often mean loud, contentious confrontation. No, to do the right thing sometimes may be by quiet actions and resolve. It can be something as simple as not attending a sporting event or other event because you are committed to attending either church or a Bible study or a prayer group. I was recently talking to a man and he relayed an incident that occurred in a place he had was employed quite a few years ago. He worked for an equipment company and they would often request parts for repairing the machinery that came into the shop. This man was the person that would be signing off on the parts requested and making sure the parts requested had the right numbers and etc. on them. One day, his boss came in to him and requested that he submit an order for a part for a piece of machinery. But instead of using the serial number of the actual machine they were working on, his boss wanted him to put a number on the order for a machine that was newer so that they would not have to pay for a piece of uh, part because it would still be under warranty. This man told his boss he could not do what he requested because it was the wrong thing to do. Upset, his boss left and went on to complete the order for him himself with the wrong information and submitted it to headquarters. A few days later, the man received a call from headquarters asking why he had not signed the order form, as he usually did, and the truth became known. Well, his direct boss that had done the wrong did not fire him immediately. He did make life there at work quite miserable for him, so the man did end up having to leave his job after being there many years. Standing for what is right 
And obeying God's command often has consequences. And as Christians, we are becoming more of a minority than a majority in America. We may come to experience persecution because of what we believe and what we stand for. As hard as this may be, it is in a necessity that as God's people, we continue to faithfully witness the gospel message and to serve those around us in love. We cannot sugarcoat this gospel, nor can we ignore to tell of the consequences for failing to accept Christ as their Lord and Savior. There is a judgment day looming and people need to be made aware of the danger with regards to where they will spend eternity. Being a living example of Christ's love and living an obedient life is every Christian's responsibility. And our first Corinthians passage gives some examples of ways that we, well, we can live in service into others by using our gifts that each one of us has been given for the furtherance of Christ's kingdom. I want to note here that this list is not ex ex exhaustive, as there are so many more gifts that the members of the body of Christ have to love and serve one another. We also need to remember that it is not just one or two people that have been given spiritual gifts. No, it is the entire church body. And each member needs to be active in using their gift or gifts as long as they are able. Be mindful that utilizing your gifts for the kingdom does not have a set retirement date. For the work is lifelong. The gifts you may utilize may change over the years, but your faithful work needs to continue. If you are not able to identify a useful gift, all you have to do is ask someone that knows you well, and I bet they will be able to get you started in kingdom building by using your gifts. Friends, we are at a crucial time in the Christian church. And the number of members continuing to spiral down is, is continuing to spiral down in a majority of our churches. This means that the number of people we need to reach with a gospel message is ever increasing. And so it takes every single person to be active in the mission field around them. Utilizing their gifts, daring to be a Daniel, daring to take a stand, daring to have a purpose firm, and dare, daring to make it known. Amen. Let's pray. Well, Lord, we thank you for your word that equips us with everything we need to let your light shine in this dark world. Help us as we prepare to leave this place that our heart, our minds, and our desires would be yours. May our hands and feet and voices move as you choose. May our moments and days continue to flow in endless praise. Amen. I invite you to rise and sing together the Hymn of Response, which is Who is on the Lord's Side. It is on page 166 of your hymnal. It will be on the screen and also in your bulletin. Don't have that one? Okay, so it'll be in your bulletin or in the hymn book. Please stand.
be seated. Romans 12 urges us as brothers and sisters by faith in Christ that in view of God's mercy to offer offer our bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and pleasing to God, this is our true and proper worship. Giving back a portion of what our loving and compassionate God has given us, whether in witnessing service or gifts, are all an act of worship and are given in thankfulness to God for Christ's priceless gift of salvation and eternal life that he has secured for us. If you've not already done so, you can place your offering in the place located in the back of the church. For those worshiping with us online, they may go to the website or they can mail their um, donation into the um, church office. I now invite you to rise again and join me in the prayer of thanksgiving by singing the doxology. joining our hearts together in prayer are there any joys or concerns that need to come before the church body this morning yes uh-huh Zena you said What's his name? I'm sorry. Bill. Bill. Okay. Anything else? We will be praying for Pastor Rudy and his family and also for many others that are sick. There's nothing more. Let's join our hearts in prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your gift of salvation and for the gifts you have given to us to enable us to share this good news with others. Lord, we pray that we would not squander any opportunity to tell others. We live in a world where spiritual deception and watered-down gospel is luring many good men and women away from the pure milk of the Word of God. And instead of drinking from the fountain of life, so many people are compromising their faith by drinking from the broken cisterns of the world. We pray that you would give us resolute courage like the Daniel of old to stand fast in this evil day and to endow each of us with a boldness and sufficient strength that only comes from you, so that we, we may re remain firmly anchored to the unalterable and infallible word of God. Keep us, we pray, from being lulled into a spiritual slumber or lured into compromising the gospel of truth for the sake of an easy existence or a peaceful life. By the help of your Spirit, keep us from diluting the message of the glorious gospel of grace or twisting its eternal truths. May we put on the whole armor of God so that we may stand firm and obedient to your word. God of grace, Bestow upon your church, your Holy Spirit, and all the gifts that come down from on high. 
Grant to us faithful pastors who will preach faithfully and give us ears to hear your word proclaimed. Sustain us while apart and bring your skirt-gathered church together again in safety. Give to each of us boldness in our weakness before the world and courage to speak your name without fear. God of power, give courage and strength to those who are persecuted for the faith and comfort the families of the martyrs. In uncertain times, keep your church from being tossed about by the wing, winds of change. Keep her steadfast in the doctrine of the apostles and the faith once delivered to the saints. Help us to admonish those who have fallen away and to restore with a gentleness those who have wandered from the truth. Hear us, merciful Father, as we pray for ourselves, for the church, for our nation, and for all conditions and manner of people. God of might, counsel the nations and their leaders to act wisely in all manners. Bless us with faithful and just leaders who will protect the sanctity of life and defend us against all enemies foreign and domestic. God of love, teach us to love one another as you have loved us. Guide us to make the manifold love and strength of Christ to our troubled and fearful world. Deliver us from this pandemic and everything else that would threaten our homes and families. Protect the police, firefighters, disaster relief workers, and medical personnel who attend us, as well as the places where we live and work. God of comfort, give your aid and relief to all who suffer, want, or need, to the sick in their affliction, to those troubled in mind. We pray especially this morning for the Visser family. We pray that you would restore them to health. Lord of all, <clears throat> the pandemic has most of us in a state of uncertainty and fear. And Lord, we pray for the many that are currently suffering illness or loss due to the virus and pray for their res 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 restoration and comfort. We pray also that you would provide your peace to all of us in the midst of the chaos. And we pray fervently that you would continue to work within each of, each of us so that we may emerge from this difficult time of trial that we would be in a state of readiness, prepared to serve you with renewed zeal and boldness. God of hope, be with those who grieve the loss of loved ones. We pray especially this morning for Zena and the loss of her mom and for the whole family, as they, uh, Stacy's whole family, as they grieve the loss of her stepfather, Bill. Point them to the promise of the resurrection and the gift of everlasting Christ, life to all who die in Christ. God of compassion, bless us with good gifts as of the earth and the fruits of our honest labors and with kind and generous heart. Accept the worship of our hearts and voices along with the tithes and offerings we bring in gratitude and thankfulness to, to God. Look with mercy on the unemployed and open our eyes and hearts to the needs at the poor, of the poor, that they may, we may serve them in your name. O oh Lord, hear the prayers of your people and teach us to trust in your will to answer our prayers with all that is needful and beneficial, both for us and for all those for whom we pray. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you, and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever, who taught us to pray together, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom 
and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Our closing hymn of proclamation is um, Come All Christians Be Committed. And it is, the words on the screen? Yep. So there will be words on the screen. It's also in your bulletin or on page 578 of your bulletin. Or 570 of your hymn book, excuse me. for some of the hymns might have not been familiar to you however the words were so wonderful and went with the whole theme of the service I thought they delivered a message probably even better than I could have so thank you for <laughs> going along so as we leave this time of worship let us go to like the as the magi left the infant Jesus rejoicing on our way because we have seen the living Lord ready to return to our daily life and work, spreading the good news of Jesus, the light of the world. Receive now these words of promise and blessing from our Lord Jesus Christ. Go out into the world in peace. Have courage. Hold on to what is good. Return no one evil for evil. Help the suffering. Honor all. Love and serve the Lord rejoicing in the power of the Holy Spirit. With God's help, we will, and the blessing of the God Almighty, the Father and the Son, be upon each one of you and will remain with you forever. Amen.